in this lesson of effective reading we are going to look at tone now there are questions specifically asking what is the tone of the passage but even if there is no question asking the, what is the tone of the passage if you want to understand the passage better you need to understand the tone now the first question is what is a tone now tone is essentially the the attitude the author has towards the subject what is his attitude that's a tone actually uh, you have these three things you have this tone mood and style right tone is author's attitude mood is the emotion uh, that whatever that created in the mind of the reader and the mood is from the reader's perspective what's the emotion that got created after reading it do we feel sad do we feel happy about it what emotion got created in the mind of the reader and style is how has he written it what kind of vocabulary has he used what are the sentence structure so we are not currently too much bothered about those two things what we need to understand is attitude now very simply put you can broadly put attitude into something that is positive and something that is negative and we can put something that is neutral okay this is a broad 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 attitude i'm sure that you can you can, you can put this attitude in multiple compartment but i'm broadly going to put it there now negative attitude can be two types one the author is pretty angry about something okay pretty angry about something that could be one or the other other thing is that he can also be uh sarcastic so either he can be mocking or he is pretty angry now this, this negative tone all this comes from the place of emotion when he angry is venting the anger from emotion or if, if it's mocking someone okay if you're very sarcastic about it that could be one kind of attitude that author has towards any subject now you could think about the subject to be anything author might be describing about let's say a, a political leader and author might be purely saying some ang angry thing about that particular person or maybe mo mocking that particular person and on the other extreme the author can be positive he he, he can be happy about something or you can think about whatever is emoji extremely happy or maybe even this kind of an attitude so you have all those positive attitude and then there is and the positive attitude this is this also come from the place of emotion and the other has a neutral attitude and neutral attitude comes from the place of reason and logic please do understand i can be critical about things i i can i can say something um, i don't like something but i don't have to go be angry or mocking or about it for example i could uh, uh let's let's take anything let's say i i want to describe a leader okay some leader and what is my attitude towards that particular leader let's say some people may not like the leader and go say that that leader is an idiot a waste good for nothing uh and that is let's say you're getting there or are you can go that that an ant is better than the leader you could mock that but i can still be critical about the leader and be neutral about it for example let's say i could say that particular leader uh or political that particular politician is is, is not going to be a good leader because to be a good leader one of the most important qualities is to have experience and this leader does not have the necessary experience therefore he is not going to be a great leader and in this case what has what i have given there is is the reasons uh that justify the claim that i am making so you have this neutral attitude and this is very important to understand this neutral attitude because almost all the passages that you going to get in the cat almost all of them will not be very rarely going to get an article which is mocking or angry or somebody is absolutely positive you're going to get an article which is neutral tone almost always right now there are these two kinds of neutral tone uh that one can think of now imagine a textbook um from your school days or maybe in your college days imagine a textbook on newton's laws of motion or thermodynamics 
or some book on macroeconomics. When you start reading the book, you actually don't feel the author is actually talking to you. The author is merely explaining something, merely describing something. So I can think of that tone where it is based on a lot of facts and that, that, that I can think of that tone as, uh, as something that is expository. Expository or the purpose is to merely explain something. That tone is expository. Yeah. But there are these other things which is, which is known as evaluative. For example, if I, if I say that should, uh, let's say should alcohol be banned and uh, or you are evaluating the statement that alcohol should be banned, you can say yes to that statement, you can say no to the statement or you can, you can look at pros and then cons, not actually committing to one position but actually analyzing both the uh, point of view. And if you give X to the statement and give certain reason, for example, alcohol is the primary cause of domestic violence, therefore alcohol should be banned. You have made a positive evaluation. You could say a negative evaluation to that statement saying that alcohol, banning alcohol is a bad idea because if you ban alcohol, all that, do, all that you're doing is cutting the supply of alcohol, the demand would still be there and they will have black market and that creates more and more problems. And, and there I'm giving reasons justifying that particular claim. And I can have neutral evaluation. These are the positives in banning alcohol. This is a negative in banning uh, alcohol. The reader, as a reader, you kind of decide. So this this is kind of a neutral evaluation, right? So you can have either uh, uh, you can either have something that is a, a positive evaluation. You can have a negative evaluation, or you can have a neutral evaluation. Those are the three things that you can have. So either you are evaluating something, uh, you are actually taking a position. You can have a positive evaluation of something, you can have a negative evaluation of something or you can have a neutral evaluation. Neutral evaluation is slightly more balanced and you can, you can think of calling that as some uh, analytical. So when you say analytical passages or, or the attitude of the author is to analyze something, he is making a neutral evaluation. He is not really explaining, he is actually evaluating, he is giving his opinion but just that he is, he is making a balanced opinion. This positive or negative evaluation is where the author has taken a strong stance on, on an issue but justify the stand by giving reasons and a positive value, negative evaluation you call this as, as, as argumentative. The, don't con, uh, confuse argumentative with uh, uh, two people arguing. This is, this is from the perspective of making a logical argumentation. Okay. Well, let's look at a, a, a few a couple of passages and see how we can apply uh, the, this, uh, this tone and how that helps you in answering questions better. One of the things that I will also would like to talk about in identifying what the tone is, is it someone expository or is it evaluative? One of the things that you want to understand is uh, the statement of fact and statement of opinion. For example, if I say that uh, uh, roses are red, that's a statement of fact. But if I go ahead and say roses are beautiful, that's a statement of opinion. Now, if I actually look at a statement, grass is blue, is it a statement of fact? Is it a statement of opinion? In fact, grass is blue is a statement of fact. It's a false statement of fact, but it is a statement of fact. A statement of fact is something that can be verified something that can be verified to be true or false. Okay. Uh, if you say rows are beautiful, you can't verify that. How, how would you define beauty? But red is verifiable, blue is verifiable. This is a statement of, statement of fact. Uh, grass is blue is a false statement of fact, but it is a statement of fact, something that can be verif verifiable. And if I say, let's say, uh, uh, country X is great, that's a statement of opinion. But if I say, uh, Prime Minister said that country X is great. That's a statement of fact. Country X is great is not my opinion. That's what the PM said. Now you can go ahead, go ahead and verify whether the PM said that or not. I'm merely quoting what someone else has said. 
and that makes it a statement of fact because what you can verify is whether that quote is accurate or not. Okay, so whenever you are quoting saying that this guy said or that guy said, please understand that's a statement of fact. And you see all these expository tone it is largely about statement of fact. Author is actually not involved. And when you have statement of opinion, and that's when the author gets involved, is making a claim. He's making the claim and he's backing the claim with a lot of reasons. Okay, let's start with the first passage and this passage is dense. I hope you've tried reading the passage from the pre-session test. You probably would have struggled reading the passage, right? But let's understand the tone. Okay. This starts by saying, the first evident logical weakness of the semantic interpretation of Dagnar's doctrine is that concepts such as conventionality and conceptual being are inconceivable without admitting some idea of reality or independent being. Oops. But if we look at from the perspective of author, what the author is saying? Author is saying there is a logical weakness. In what? In the semantic interpretation of Nagarjuna's doctrine. So this is very clearly an evaluative passage and negative evaluation. There is a semantic interpretation of Nagarjuna's doctrine and author's opinion is that this is, uh, has, uh, has got a logical weakness. In one sense, author is saying that this is this has got certain flaw or this particular thing is wrong. So, if I understand this statement, the first evident the logical weakness of semantic independent language doctrine is that concepts such, concepts such as conventionality and conceptual being are inconceivable without admitting uh, some idea of a reality of independent being. And then he says, therefore, the phrase ultimate reality, PO, does not exist and everything is only concept reality is un inconsistent with the logical point of view. The phrase ultimate reality does not exist and everything is only a show is inconsistent from a logical point of view. That is what the author say this. So, PO does not exist and SO exist. This, if the phrase PO does not exist and everything uh, is, uh, I think that would have been the semantic interpretation of Nagarji doctrine. The PR that is what it is said, I think author is saying this is wrong. That is what he says. And the next set apart is author nearly giving reasons to that, right. There is, and this is where a lot of bouncers can happen. Well, it will keep, keep, keep bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. There is nothing more, the more than idealistic position for which Allah Hegel, the only real is rational, conceptual. Now, idealism, apart from the question of whether it may uh, truly be considered as an interpretation of Nagar's doctrine, as recently defended by Shulman, is one of the metaphysical realist position from a semantic interpretation. At least it is writing claim to take a dist uh, distance. Semantic interpreters, in opposition to this logical proof, state that it is possible to demonstrate the existence of something that is pure type. As an example of the responsibility, both Sidris and Garfield have recourse to institutional money and so on and so forth. So, he is now what is basically, if you look at the tone of the author in this particular passage, is to say that there is a logical weakness in the semantic interpretation of Nagarjuna's doctrine. And the passage goes on and on and on. Actually, two questions can be done here straight. So, uh, you actually look at the question, they say which of the following accurately describes the style of the passage. Uh, the style of passage is argumentative because you made a negative valuation done. And this can be actually got for just from the first sentence. Yeah. And you actually look at the next question. The primary purpose, which is like which is asking the question, why did the author write this particular passage? We know that it's a negative valuation. Okay. Uh, so therefore, this word, for example, answer choice A says present a critical analysis of interpretation of Nagarjuna's doctrine. It is not analysis. Analysis says that it looks at both positive and negative is actually making an argument. argument. So it is not analytical. Okay. Uh, and if you look at answer choice number 2, it says undertake to reconstruct, undertake to reconstruct the main features. Reconstruct is to build something. Reconstruct is something to build. He is actually saying that there is a logical weakness. He is making negative valuation. This cannot be the answer choice at all. Uh, one says, present the main incongruities or main weaknesses of Nagarjuna's theory. Okay. And our answer choice number uh, 3 says, present the weakness of the interpretation of uh, 
Sidris and Garfield of Nagar Jiran's theory. The difference here is this one is actually saying that there is a weakness in the interpretation of Nagar Jiran's theory. This option number one is saying there is a weakness in the Nagar Jiran's theory itself. Option one is saying there is a weakness in Nagar Jiran's theory. Option two is saying there is a weakness in the interpretation of Nagar Jiran's theory. And if you actually look at the passage, it says uh, logical weakness in the interpretation of Nagar Jiran's doctrine. In the interpretation of Nagar, that's a key word. So if the problem is not with Nagarjuna's doctrine per se or Nagarjuna's theory, the problem is with the interpretation. That gets us that answer choice, which is uh, answer choice one is wrong, answer choice three is right. Now, if you look at this particular passage, I'm not done it, read it completely. So to answer those two questions, all I required from everything in this particular passage was just this first part. the first evident logical weakness of semantic interpretation of Nagarjuna's doctrine. And that, that, that tone of that and, and what is mentioned there helps us understand, not only understand uh, the tone that is argumentative and also help us understand the primary purpose itself. Now there could be some question which is actually forcing me to go back to the passage and solve. Some question forces me to do that, then I will go back and solve. Now, your idea of understanding the tone helps you in many cases to eliminate answer choice quickly. There is just one uh, question here. Let me start with the question. What is the tone adopted by the author? Just want to check the tone. Uh, objective, biased or critical or ominous. Okay. If you now read this passage. Okay. The first paragraph says, the dead will eventually outnumber living on Facebook according to a new study. Not author's opinion, author is merely co quoting another study. All right, and then the second paragraph says the phenomena could take place within the next 50 years, though will take little longer according to research paper. This is not author's opinion, this is based on the research paper from the University of Oxford and so on and so forth. The study authors, there are study authors, these two gentlemen used a combination of data, uh, including project morality and so on and so forth. Uh, and they say, they say, okay, the author is. In all of this, what we can see is statement of fact. Author has not given his opinion. Author has merely said, this person did it, that research, is, that research told me something. And then the next paragraph we see, a Facebook spokesperson said, this is about what the Facebook spokesperson said, uh, while the company agree or disagree with the study's protection, it is aware of the larger issue and so on and so forth. So, so this is about what opinion, what the Facebook spokesperson said. And look at the last uh, two paragraph. Uh, he is saying that Oman and Watson are concerned. Uh, the court reads, Watson argues, uh, Oval's court, uh, Oman says, he believes in all of this, author is merely stating what that person has said. It is all statement of fact. Author does not say whether uh, this is right, this is wrong, this, this research is good, this is bad. He has not done a single evaluation. From author's point of view, ladies and gentlemen, this whole tone is 100% objective. Author was not biased. Author was not critical. Nor is the author ominous. It, the, from the point of view of the author, the passage is objective. What is important about tone? Is, is you thinking about tone of a passage. If you actually think about a tone of the passage, what gives you perspective is that our author, okay, an author who has written that particular thing and we can actually get inside the mind of the author and start, uh, this will give it, uh, this will give you understanding about why the author has written the passage and that also helps us in eliminating quite a few options. Oh, well. See you in the next lesson then.